Whereas the Messenger of Allah is a prophet of mercy that, re that requires no payment, no reward. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ Or the other verse which says, إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةِ In other words, from my services that I've performed, 23 years, brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah, on one occasion, he descends from the cave in which he used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, you know, the reason why the Prophet used to worship Allah in that cave as opposed to the Kaaba should be obvious to, to most of you. The Kaaba had, had turned into a place of idolatry. The Kaaba was now home to 365 idols and statues that used to be worshipped um, instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the, the Kaaba wasn't exactly this pure, unadulterated and serene temple of, of worship for the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It had been corrupted to the point where the messenger would have to leave the sacred grounds of the Kaaba and find refuge in a mountain. Right? Jabal al-Rahma, the mountain of mercy, Jabal al-Nur rather, the mount, the mount of, of light. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him so he descends, there's, an, there's a descent at the beginning of the mission. And this is what we're celebrating tonight. And then at the end there is an ascent. The Prophet ascends the pulpit on which he delivers the tragic news of his death, of his imminent death. Between that descent and the ascent, there are 23 years. 23 years of strenuous struggle of pain, misery, and bloodshed. When he descends that mount, the first thing he faces is not people welcoming him back as the trustworthy person that they've always known him as. He was faced with rocks being thrown at him. He was faced with the most vile of all accusations, that he's a liar. Imagine a man who's always been pure, a man who's led a life of nothing but purity and goodness. A man who's never laid his hand on anything that doesn't belong to him. For him to be called a thief is painful. The Messenger of Allah was always the most reliable, the most truthful. They called him that, and yet the first chance they get, because he's come back with an offer that at face value is absolutely beautiful. قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تَكُونُونَ مُلُوكًا فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ وَفِي أُخْرَاكُمْ Say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Say there is no gods but the Almighty Allah. And in return for that, the other side of the bargain is this. You will, you will become kings, you will become emperors, you will become rulers, not only in the hereafter but in this world as well. Sounds good, doesn't it? but not if they had to make any compromises. A lot of people are like that, by the way. You don't have to go back to the Prophet's time to, to understand just how vulgar they were. How stupid they were to turn down that beautiful offer. Because even today, it's exactly like that. On a daily basis, we face the same sort of challenging situation in that we are forced to make compromises. To become a Muslim, to become a believer, you have to make compromises. You will break a nail every once in a while. That's just how it works. It's difficult. Imam al-Kadhim has a beautiful hadith in which he says to Hisham. He says to him, Ya Hisham, inna al mu'mineen, those who are believers and who are smart and wise, those who look around looking for a good investment opportunity, right? Nadaru ila hadhi dunya they looked at this world and they realized one thing, that to get this world, to be successful in this world, there is mashakka involved, the Imam says. There is pain and difficulty. It's not easy. It's not easy becoming a millionaire. It's not easy becoming a billionaire. It's, it's very difficult. Unless you happen to be lucky and born into the family. But generally speaking, it's very, very hard. Then the Imam says, and they also looked at the akhir. They also looked at the hereafter. And they realize the same exact thing, that to be successful in the Akhara involves pain, involve, involves making sacrifices and concessions and, and, and going through a lot of difficulty. فَاخْدَارُوا مِنَ الْمَشَقَّةِ أَبْقَاهَا So between these two choices, 
To be successful in this world, it's difficult. To be successful in the hereafter, it's also difficult. So they chose the difficulty that ultimately gives them something that lasts longer. The Akhara lasts a lot longer. The maximum you could enjoy yourself in this life is what? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. That's, that's the absolute maximum. After that, you die. So what's more lasting? It's the Akhara. الفاتحة مع الصلاة